Okay, so today I want to talk about a concept that uh, a lot of people struggle with when they're first starting out with web development. And that's the idea behind having two or more pages and then one script or one CSS file. And how do you connect all these things? So I have here a simple website and I've got two pages. One where I'm going to list off a whole bunch of posts and one where I'm going to list off a bunch of users. But the thing is, what I'm doing is... I'm fetching this data from an API. I'm bringing back all this information to display on the page. Here's the page for posts. Here's the page for users. And you can see there's no content here. I just have this UL element. This is where I'm actually loading the data. And on this page, I'm loading the data as well from an API. The only thing that's actually in the page at the very beginning is the header and the nav bar. Same thing here. I've got the header and the nav bar. That's the content that we're seeing on these two pages. When you click on this, when you go to the other pages, I'm actually doing a request with fetch, going off, getting the data, bringing it back and loading it onto the page. And just to illustrate this, I'm going to open up the, uh, the dev tools here. And inside the dev tools, the latest version, uh, we've got under more tools, there is this network conditions. This is where you can do network throttling. So I'm going to simulate having a slow 3G connection here, and then you can see what's happening. As I click on the user page, you can see little things spinning here. The page is loading. There's users. I'm displaying a loading message, and then I get the data. Same thing here with posts. Makes the request for the HTML page. That comes back. That gets loaded. I get a little loading thing that's animated, and then all the data gets displayed here. So let's take a look and see how this is working. One JavaScript file linked at the bottom. One JavaScript file linked at the bottom here, this common JavaScript file between the two of them. The name's not important. You can call it anything you'd like, but it's the same file being used for both. Now I've wrapped all of my script inside of one parent object. That way I'm not cluttering up the global namespace inside of this app object. I've got one property for the base URL. This is where I'm going to fetch the data from, this website, JSON placeholder. I've got my init function, which I'm going to call down here at the bottom of my script. Here it is, app.init. I'm calling that function to get this whole thing started. Inside of this, I'm waiting for DOM content loaded. So make sure that the rest of the page is loaded. Then I'm going to call this load method. And two things that I'm going to do. One show loading. This is that little animation that I've got. So I'm just putting one list item inside of my list and displaying the words loading and I'm adding a CSS class name loading list. All that's going to do is animate it. So it's just going to sit there and pulse and change color and fade in and out with the opacity. Inside my common CSS file, here's that animation that I'm doing right here. It's just going back and forth through these different values for opacity and color. Okay, so we have this loaded on the page. This is what we've put inside of that list item. Now remember, the person has clicked on a link. The page has loaded. So when the page loads, this is all the content that they're going to see. We're adding a list item here. I don't have to worry about clearing out anything that was in there because in the page, when it loads, there is no data inside this list. So we are manually putting in or dynamically through our script, we're creating this list item that's going to sit here. So we do that as step one. Step two, I need to get the data. But I've got one page that's loading posts, one page that's loading users. So I need to know how can I load the appropriate data for the page that I'm on. There's a number of ways you can do this. What I like to do, one of the simple things that you can do, is give an ID to your body element. So this is my posts page. And over here, this is my users page. So I just give an ID to the page. So the body element has an ID that tells me which page this is. Back in my script, inside my get data function, I will find out. I'll create a variable called page, and I will go to the body element and get its ID. That is going to tell me which page I'm on. So here, I've got posts and users. Those are my two pages. But 
I've got a default. I could have some other page. I can make a whole bunch of different pages and every page can have its own custom things that it does. For posts, I'm going to call the function get posts. This one right here, I take the base URL that we defined up at the top and I add the word posts onto the end of it. That's going to go do the request for that URL. We do the fetch. When it comes back, we get the JSON from the, the uh, response. Then I'm going to call this other method for show posts. This one just takes the data that came back from this fetch request, loops through it, and adds a list item for each one. That's all it's doing. For the users, we call get users. It does the same thing. It's just a different URL doing a fetch, and then it's going to call a function called show users. So we have show posts and show users. Those are our two functions. And then for every other page that I add to my website, all I need to do is add another entry in here. So let's say we had a page called, oh, I don't know, photos. We can call a function called get photos. Add other custom functions. So anytime you need something that is unique to that page, you just put it inside of here, inside this switch case statement. Now I don't have that, so I'm going to comment it out so it doesn't cause an error. But every time you come in here and you create another page, you can put any number of functions in here that you want. These functions are going to be the ones that set up the page. Maybe one page needs to have a different header, so you can write the function that's going to modify the header. Maybe one's got different uh, custom styles that you need to apply. Maybe one is talking to a different API. Well, you just write the functions in here. This is sort of the control, this get data, which happens on load. So DOM content loaded, calls get data, get data decides, hey, what page are you on? Based on that, there's different functions that I need to do. You need to do some authentication. Okay, great. So maybe this page is going to be a protected page. So I'm going to call a function authorize. You know, and I've got a function called authorize that's going to do a fetch request off to a web server. I'm going to pass up a JSON web token and I'm going to validate the fact that, yes, in fact, I should be here. I'm allowed to be on this. And if this fails, it's going to redirect me back to someplace else. The key is to sort of encapsulate the functionality for each page into these small little functions. Create small functions that do one thing and do that one thing well in a way that you can read quite easily. And then it's just a series, one function after another. So I have show posts being called after the fetch succeeds. If the fetch succeeds, then I clear out that UL, so the list that's on the page. So list, I'm using here and here inside of both show posts and show users, because I decided when I was structuring this that I was always going to use the same class name. There's a unique ID for each one, but I also use a class name, and the class name is going to be list, whether it's here, or here, or some other page. By coming up with a naming convention and consistently using that, I'm going to be able to go and find the elements on my page regardless of which function I'm inside of. I'll know, oh yeah, that's my main content list. That's my main header. That's my sidebar. That's my footer. I'll be able to target the, the different parts of the page because I use a consistent naming convention for my classes. And then with our data, we do a for each loop, create a list item for each one, and we append it to the UL. And we just do that again and again. The last function that I have down here, this error, this is a common error function that I'm using. So in both places, get posts, get users, or if there's other pages where I'm doing this, I'm going to have my catch call this app.error function. It's the same for both of them. If I had other pages where it was failing, I'd do this there as well. So down here, inside this error function, I'm clearing up the list. I'm making sure that it's no longer saying loading, creating a div, giving it a couple of classes to style it like it's an error, putting it on the page. So it's going to appear up at the top of my screen. And then after three seconds, it's going to remove itself. And now I've got this function that I can call every single time that I have a failure in my code, 
I can display the message because I've created one function that I can reuse dynamically by just passing the error object to it. I can display an error on my screen that will remove itself. Okay, and that's it. That is sort of the idea behind this two pages, one script. When you've got multiple HTML files, they're all sharing the same JavaScript file. They're sharing the same CSS file in the JavaScript. Use DOM content loaded and then have a common function that you call, which looks at the page, looks at the ID for the body and says, okay, which one of the pages am I on? Based on that, this is the script that I'm going to run. So hopefully that gets you started, that gives you enough to think about with building your websites and you can start to put all the functionality into one single script. You're going to get some performance benefit because it's one script the browser can download and cache and then it doesn't have to download this every time you go from one page to the next. It's using that cached script. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.